Naturally born. Hello and welcome to another episode of Frame by Frame. Andy's sitting next to me. And Stephen's sitting next to me. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> That's the worst way of We should have opened us. Yeah, we're crap at opens. Well, you should talk about. We're better at closing. <laughs> well, I've always sort of found like starting stuff is really difficult for me, yeah. and ending it's difficult. And I really struggle at the middle bit as well. Right, but that 10% part, you really, really hit the mark. 0.5% I make a point and people might go, oh yeah, yeah. 0.5%. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, let's, well, let's wait like for that 0.5%. Wait for that peak. It's coming, okay. it's coming, guys. Every episode there's a peak and Andy's peak will be coming. And, um, and what, what about me? When, when's my peak? You just, you just finished, Ben. That's just, you just well, done it. I say hello. Yeah. It's right my frame. <laughs> Okay, so the best is over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like I'm clowning. I'm Peter Brinkley. We all go a little mad sometimes. Apparently, it doesn't spend time in this time with never been a big man. Yeah. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Right, so in this episode, <laughs> uh, Bird Demick and uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Now, which one do you want to go through first? Oh. Uh, through, through. <laughs> oh. What? Uh, can I, can I, am I okay to take the lead and say we'll start with the one I hated the least? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, let's go. We'll start with Birdemic. You hated that the least? The least, yeah. That's funny because I, I, I like that, dislike that more. Right, okay. But, okay, let, let's, let, let's try and figure this one out. What, what, what is, well, uh, first, what is Birdemic? Birdemic is, um, is a film of sorts about um, a blossoming romance between a, a stockbroker and a model, um, yeah. which gets interrupted by a sort of bird apocalypse. But they're all infected. They're all infected by terrible animation. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's a yeah. Right. First of all, let's. I think the, the the distinction between these two films is I think one is crap on purpose as a sort of ironic thing, and one was made I guess with sincerity, but is still terrible. And is is uh, so we're but, talking about the room. The, yeah, the, the room. room is... I would say. From what I got from watching it, he he tried to make a film that he wanted to make. Uh, yeah, but because everybody panned it but loved it, they kind of changed his mind and said it was meant to be that way. Yeah, but, but I think Bird Demic is it's clearly not made. It's made to be stupid. To be stupid, but it's terrible. It's, it's awful. Yeah, but it's awful. it's not done in an it's done in an ironic way. But it's not succeeded. We're it didn't go- deliver it. it didn't yeah, deliver it. We're, we're not going away going. Uh, feeling happy that it was made or we we we're, we don't go ah oh, really got how they did that that's very clever mm. it's, no, not, it's not like we've talked uh, about Garth Marenghi's Dark Place yes that does it perfectly and it's fantastic and it's funny but the, the, the director writer and maker of Birdemic is nowhere near as intelligent and as clever and as funny as Richard Ayoade is that's the problem that's it. I mean, the, the the thing is, if you go out um, with the premise of making a uh, a bad film uh, as bad as possible, but actually coming out with with saying something about it being bad, mm. having a message and saying uh, this is bad, but we're actually uh, making a, a parody of yeah, bad yeah. films. We're we're actually making a parody of bad films. This is the Birdemic is just without the parody. It's literally just. Uh, as if a student had made it, um, yeah. But, with, but, but, but without sincerity or any purpose. To make a, a good parody, you have to be intelligent enough to to carry it out, to make to put it to make it to fruition. Um, if you haven't got that intelligence, 
to know how to do it, how to subvert it, and ma- to, yeah. to, to, you... to meet the criteria of it being a parody. Yeah. So now you get a big payday with a big stock option, huh? Yeah, I earned it. All those big deals I did with NCT. Woo-hoo! And millions of dollars of revenues and sales. Well, you've done a great job, Rod. Meet Rod. Hi. A young software salesman on his way to achieving his Silicon Valley dream. I'm thinking about opening up a green tech company. Really? Meet Natalie, a beautiful young fashion model driven by passion. I remember you now. You were my English class. I was. Yeah. So how come you never made a pass at me in school? Throw true love into the equation and anything is possible. I was wondering if we can keep in contact. Sure. How big was the sale? One million dollars. In other news today, the population of polar bears is declining rapidly. Hi, my name is Jerry Owens. I'm from Solar Power Accessories. This morning, flocks of seagulls and crows were found dead in downtown San Jose and along Highway 101. Hey, I thought I told you to stand back. These birds are contaminated. The crows and seagulls also caused an accident on Highway 101. Authorities are investigating the cause of their death. Rod, right, let's get out of here. species is a dangerous, menacing, and terrifying animal. Why would birds do something like that? I mean, why, why would they just attack? I don't know. Saw, we saw bad acting. Yes. We saw bad special effects. Yes, we saw... Uh, well, we heard bad sound design. Bad sound design uh, from every cut, from every angle. Yeah. Um, we, 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 bad transitions. Yes. Um, awkward start starting, uh, you know, where uh, when you actually edit it in, you can't have it stopped and then stationary and then it started to move as if it was on freeze frame for a few seconds. Yeah. And that you, kind of thing. And you've got, like, scenes that are, that are just pointless. Yeah. Don't amount to anything. The, 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 the opening with the, the, the credits and it's just a car driving and then it just stops. It's like a good five minutes of this car just driving through the hills of LA, I guess Most it is. Most likely, yeah. And then it's just it amounts to Cause nothing. Because they, they thought it would be a good idea to have the title sequence just like that. Mm. But it doesn't say anything. No. That's the problem with this film, is that every single decision says nothing. Every single moment in it says absolutely nothing to the effect of it being for a reason. It's just going... It, it, it doesn't even go through the motions, because the motions are distorted. Um, there, There's... There's really no reason for this movie to have been made. <laughs> no, there's not. And yeah, it's awkward, isn't it? It is. I'm struggling because. Awkward. Did you what? Did you hate it? I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, I could eat. Yeah, I could eat. Yeah, I'm. I'm through with this. I'm not gonna. I'm Already? Not gonna, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I could. I could try. I mean, I'm, maybe if maybe if we had food, something interesting in front of us. Like a, a big plate with a pizza on it. That'd be that'd be lovely. That would be worth looking at. Should we go to like a, a restaurant? Or we'll get back to eat somewhere. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go. Let's just all walk right. out yeah, of here. Right. Come on, let's do it. Put your headphones down. Come on. All right, just don't trip under the wires. Place is dead anyway. No, just leave the leave the recording room.
Please the voice mailbox for frame by frame. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or hold for more options. I just want to ask you a quick question. When you go out at night, do you wear any particular kind of brassiere? Because the lady here says she read that there was a girl who was just standing outside her house when all of a sudden there was some kind of shooting and apparently her life was saved because a bullet got lodged in her padded bra. So I'm thinking if you're going to be walking around the city late at night, it couldn't hurt to go over to Macy's lingerie department and buy yourself what basically amounts to a bulletproof vest with built-in cleavage. All right, honey. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for the pizza, man. This is great. Oh, I thought we just needed like a good pepperoni pizza to get the taste of birdemic out of our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> so the pizza has just arrived, and uh, we're not talking about birdemic anymore. I think we've kind of... They made a sequel, you know. Oh. Hmm. Is it any better? I saw the... I kind of flicked through it, and it's still the same bad sound. They kind of think... I think they reckon that it works, and that people wanted to see more. So therefore they just carried on doing what they did before. But that... So the, the thing is, they got the money and they made it. And then they got more money and made another one. Who, hmm. Who's... Who? Who? Who's investing money into this? There's many cares about it. Yeah. There's many struggling independent filmmakers out there who get no money. Like us. Like Yeah, like us. Well, that's quite a nice restaurant, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got a decent... Um, the, 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 the staff are a little bit feline. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but that, 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 I guess it just has the charm. Yeah, I've never had a pizza brought to me by a cat before. No, 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 that's, that's unique. They're everywhere. Oh. You hear that? Cats are walling in the kitchen, I think. <laughs> Must be a complaint. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we've, we've made films, and we've yeah. struggled um, with, with being low, no budget yeah, filmmakers. No, yeah, no money, and he's trying to make something of substance with nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and if you haven't seen that, it is it's called CaCO3, which is the symbol for chalk. Uh, just in case you yep. weren't up on your um, periodic table, um, check that out at roastedportions.com. It's also available at the Roasted Portions channel on YouTube. So check those out and uh, give us an appraisal. Let us know what you think, um, and let us know if you want us to make a sequel. Yeah, CaCO3 too. <laughs> the chemical composition doesn't make any sense no, apparently it but yeah I mean, but people obviously liked Birdemic because it, we're, we're talking about it yeah we're not talking about it because we liked it no but yeah it, mm. it's fallen into this new category of it's so bad it's good thing mm. which I'm not sure I buy into to a certain extent there are I mean, the guys at Red Letter Media have been um, doing this um, program on their on their show called Best of the Worst, mm. where they pick three movies and they discuss, they watch them all together and they have a good laugh. Uh, but that's the thing about these films; these these are not films you go and sit on. You, you watched them on your own, didn't you? Yes. Do you think it would have you would have had a different experience if you'd watched them together with me or with other people? Yeah, I think if it was a group of us and we're all having beers and. We would be laughing at how awful it is. We would find each other's comments and and, and yeah. interactions more humorous, and that's I think this is what the idea of best worst films. You've you. It's not about the, the film that you're watching. It's about the experience of actually watching it with others. It's like Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's what it is then. Hmm. Yeah. What can you think of other films that are like that? Well, of course, there's apart from Titanic. Apart from well, there's the Room, which we'll which we will talk about once we finish the pizza. I think I want to give a little bit of time on that. Um, but really, really bad films that that go out of their way to be bad, um, mm. and that end up being quite good. Like the Leprechaun series of films, are they like that? 
Um, I've only seen the first one, and the only thing that I, I took from that was Jennifer Aniston swearing. That's what most people take from it. Uh, that was no fucking bear. That's what they're that, 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 uh, For the rest, I don't really care. Troll is is a... No, no, but these are films that were actually made by a studio and actually distributed. I, I think a lot of the best of the worst films are made by wannabe directors who simply just work with their friends. I remember seeing a martial yeah. arts film called Jaguar Lives, mm -hmm. which was absolutely dreadful, but it was made with you know complete conviction. There were, you can tell everyone in it is trying. Mm. They just didn't know how to make a film, you know. This thing you'll get with the Birdemic thing is they, they tried to do the parody thing, but it's just not worked. Mm. Which makes me think: that, Did they all enjoy making it? At least, did they? I can imagine they probably all had a good old laugh about the effects. I, I reckon. I, do you know what? This is my hypothesis about Birdemic. They, the guy that they got to do the special effects, promised to be a lot better than he was, and I think that. See, I'm not sure I agree. I think. They went it, out. With I the think, yeah, I think they went out with the intention for it to look that bad. Because mm. he's got all the um, the fire effects in it, haven't you? They look like they were just done on an iPhone app. Mm. True, Ooh, true. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, they did make the sequel, but based on the strength of that, people actually watched Birdemic yeah. and like the fact that it was bad. But I kind of get the feeling that they feel as though everybody likes that. Mm. And that's why they've done it exactly the same again. But it, it hasn't worked because, like you say, there's no there's no conviction behind it. And I think I think that what we're struggling here with, with, with is is not knowing if it was done sincerely or is it done accidentally, and then they just this is what it is. Yeah. Um, but I would never go out of my way to make a movie like that. I think part of it's because you you again I'm going to mention Garth Mungie's Dark Place. You've seen it done right. Mm, I, I mm. like I like the birds. I like Garth Ring's Dark Place. I'm going to do that. It was just purely an inspiration for the film, The Birds. Really? Because it does have the when one of the numerous cars that they go past and have to look if everyone's okay in there. Mm. They have got the typical eyes pecked out of one of them, haven't you? And that's it. They just they just tried to do the birds, and then they ended up doing something that was. Uh, that's vaguely not even hilariously worth watching. Mm. So, um, it's ridiculous. And, and apparently the, the distribution, they did have a bit of money. They went to the Sundance Film Festival <laughs> and um, um. They, they got told no. Also, I, 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 from what I read, the, um, the posters that they designed, not that I can talk because I've also designed a poster with an incorrect spelling on the, on the actual credits at the bottom, but they had the main title of it the main title was incorrect. Birdemic. They spelt Birdemic wrong. Brilliant. And um, and a number and several other artifacts of their um, of, of their so-called um, advertising campaign was misspelled as well. Really. So they they weren't very uh, skilled in any way, shape, or form. Really. So there there is no part of. Birdemic that has any skill or talent behind it whatsoever. Mm -mm. Um, there's there's nothing. There's literally nothing to hold on to here. Um, we don't care about anybody. We don't care about the story. We don't. Um, we, we're too concerned about the fact that it's it's it's, it's badly made rather yeah. than actually. We could, that's it. It's concern rather than actual enjoyment. When, when about for about ten minutes. <clears throat> I was laughing because of that bad. And then after that, I just become angry and bored. And sad. Yeah, and sad. And very sad. sad. I did cry into my pillow. Almost disappointed in a way that you kind of, that you felt sorry for them, but then also felt, you felt everything out about what you could have made if you had the money and the, and the distribution rights. And yeah, the, it's the waste. The waste. That's it. It's wasted. It's There's, a waste. That, that was my 0.5% moment. Was that it? That was it, just then. That was your 0.5%. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like a homeopathic film reviewer. If yeah. I were 0.5% of substance, the rest is just crap. nothingness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happened a little bit later than uh, <laughs> the 0 0.5, but um, probably around about the 20, 20 mark by now, but that's okay. 
It's no. a little bit more substance and a little less crap. Oh, okay. Thank but you. you're homeopathic, as well as sociopathic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, th so, there's there's really nothing to hold on to for Birdemic. There's no reason to look at the director's name. Um, uh, it's it's almost as if it's soulless and, and it's just not worth talking about. Yeah. It's not worth it. So let's start talking about it okay. and enjoy the pizza. Here's the wine that you ordered, sir. Is there rules against consuming alcohol while driving a podcast? Mm, mm -mm. No? Yeah, I'll have another glass of wine, please. Thank you. Would you like to let it breathe for a little while, or shall I pour it now? Go right ahead. Yeah. So, other bad movies. Um, before we get onto the room, I think we need to... I'm going to finish the pizza before we go onto the room. I want to be clear about what I'm saying with that. The, uh, the, uh, can you think of the worst movie you've ever seen? What is the worst movie you've ever seen? Is it Birdemic, or is there something No. Else? El Chupacabra. It's a mm -hmm. film. El Chupacabra. It was mm -hmm. a film I picked up in um, Woolworths I think for a pound I had a really good cover of this like beat this monster I was like I want yeah you know for a quid you can't go wrong I'll have that and it was dreadful they tried to they tried to make a decent film but at one point an actor fluffs his lines and then just starts his line again so it was like really? yeah, it was just, oh, jarringly terrible it's, uh, mm. it, it's, it's not this but it's sort of like um, I'm sorry can you I'm sorry, can you just pick that up for me? But it's that obvious. Mm. And it was terrible. Um, it was like all the actors in it were out of porn films. Oh, right. Well, they, it was they, that, that well, kind of acting, you know what I mean? They're used to stopping and starting, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was dreadful. I remember... Did you, did you stop it? Did you actually watch the whole thing? No, no. I, I, I skimmed through it. Mm. There has to be something, at yeah, least. Yeah, but they had this one scene where mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's just one camera and it's sort of like a, 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 sea, a glass corridor and you see them walking and this is like Casio keyboard back in track. Like, that kind of thing. Mm. And they're just walking and the, the music's building suspense and then they turn this corridor and start walking towards the camera. You can't hear what they're saying, but it sort of builds and it's building and it's building yeah, yeah. and then they just walk off camera and that's it. And the whole thing took about four minutes. Ah. Yeah. Damn. Dreadful. <laughs> it's awful. A no. Wal Walworths movie for a quid, though. Well, yeah, you don't expect. Yeah, yeah. I still expected better than that. I didn't think it would be quite that bad. But it was awful. What about you? What, well, films that, that just didn't even make it past? You know, that I just cut off. It's a good question. Mannequin 2. Oh right. Now, Mannequin One, back in the, back in the day when you're a kid, hilarious stuff. Was it Daryl Hannah? No, this was actually. Oh, um, she was Splash, weren't she? Splash. Splash. Yeah. Splash. Um, Mannequin had uh, um, Matthew McCarthy. Right. Not Matthew McConaughey, everybody. Matthew McCarthy. Is that yeah, it's Matthew McCarthy. McCarthy and um, Sex in the City Extraordinaire, Kim Cattrall, as the mannequin. Oh. Now it 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 was. It had its moments of, of watchability in the first film, and they had that amazing window dresser, uh, very camp black window dresser, Hollywood, Hollywood, and it was a it was a good thing to have him in the film. He kind of made it a little bit easier going, and um, and of course you had the, the typical security guard, um, Lieutenant Harris from um, Police, Police Academy. Yeah, yeah. And there you go. You got James Spader in it as the sleazy uh, store manager, which kind of works as well. Good to see him doing something different. And it was okay. It's passable, it's enjoyable, it's got a rocking star, uh, uh, soundtrack to it for the 80s. Um, Starship, uh, nothing's going to stop us now, being the main thing that drives it home. It's a fine, f it's an okay comedy, but right. you know, it's a bit tacky now. The second one... Oh, God. They just, they just had a device for Hollywood to come back. And he starts off doing... Some kind of dancing thing, and, uh, and it literally took me all of five minutes. There was uh, people in a car. I don't even know where the mannequin was, if there was a mannequin, but it didn't last any longer than ten minutes. It was just trite, trite rubbish. But th this is a Hollywood company that actually put money into a sequel for the sake of a uh, of this one character. But that's the thing, though, isn't it? I think if um, 
the first one made just a, a, it did quite well at the box office we make a sequel we'll make more money out of this again it goes back to yeah what people forget about any kind of integrity or any kind of artistic merit we just need to make money and this might make us a bit of money so let's do it hmm. it was like Team Wolf I like, hmm. enjoyed the first one the second one was dreadful Team, Team Wolf 2 thank goodness they didn't make a Howard the Duck 2 <laughs> I reckon they're going to remake it I reckon Disney is going to take control of that one they can do it. They can do something. Something good might come out of How the Duck. I heard or read somewhere that if you can trace the success of Disney and Marvel to that film. Mm -hmm. So apparently um, Lucas had lost a lot of money in the divorce and that was his way of making some money back. But it completely bombed, didn't it? Didn't do anything and everyone hated it. And I think... In fact, no scratch it because I don't have any proper facts. But no, hang on. I think Temple of Doom was a darker movie because he was going for a divorce. And he he got the money from that to make Howard the Duck, which was his was supposed to be his big divorce comeback right. picture. I think that's the lineology of it, yeah. Well, it didn't work very well for him, did it? No, it didn't work at all. Um, and then he and then he went to, to TV and did the uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. <clears throat> I mean, if you're talking about bad films, I mean George Lucas is really at the top of the heap nowadays. I mean, he's the, he's the guy who's made the most money, has the most successful film series ever under his belt, and the least successful film series under his belt. Yeah. But uh, I say successful in terms of money, it made money. All the prequels made money. Because people, oh, yeah, yeah. people kept on wanting to see it to, to actually realise how bad they were. I um, think people... Mark Kermel says this himself. Just because a film makes a heap of money doesn't mean that the people who went to pay the money to watch it enjoyed it. It doesn't mean it's a good film because it's made a lot of money. No, no I'm definitely not, not condoning that it is a good film mm. because it made money. Um, but yeah, bad films are there... Um, to, to, I think I think the best bad films are the ones that fall away to the to the to the, to the sides and become cult movie classics. Yeah. Um, and nothing can be a cult movie classic unless it's failed, as far as I'm concerned. I agree with that. Um, a film I like very much, Big Trouble in Little China, mm. didn't do well at all, and people still talk down about it now. But I think it's a great film. It's enjoyable. It's funny. And Kurt Russell's fantastic in it, but you know, and that's—I would say—that's the definition of a cult film. I was quite surprised talking about cult, cult film definitions. Was when Donnie Darko first came out, mm. everybody called it a cult classic. Yeah, I... oh, this was—I think this was the, the beginning of the end of of film terminology being used in a, in a, in an obnoxious, incorrect fashion. Yeah, to in order to promote and sell. Nowadays, the word epic is completely ruined. Yeah. Um, as is cult. As is um, because people want because there's this this need to be uh, a grand uh, to, for for things to be promoted uh, as being something before they actually achieve that greatness. Mm. And that, it, it's bothering me now because nobody really gives a damn about greatness in in film. It's all about you know what is perceived to be great rather than what actually is. Yeah. But Donnie Darko was called a cult classic before it even made any money at the box office. So before it even started. So, so the, the the using the word cult is to have that kind of oddball Statist lynching yeah. type film. That's yeah. cult now. But nowadays it's not earned. It's not a. It's not a an accolade that you earn through through hard work or di or. Failure, you know, you, you can't. You got to, like I say, you got to, you got to really go yeah. through hell and back to be called a cult classic. Because people always talk about Pulp Fiction as being a cult classic, and I don't think that is. is that no, it's successful. It is a successful film, and it had a lot of money, and it had big bankable stars in it, mm. and it was everybody, everybody wanted a piece of it. It's not cult. No, not at all. Cult is underground. Cult is something that is dug up from its ashes. It's the phoenix from the flame movie. Mm. Um, that's what a cult classic is. Like Spice World the movie. Well, that never actually made it to a cult. That that's it's like, a cult film. It's that's a cult. buried. It's an epic Dead. cult classic. So there's a bad movie. It's, it's sci-fi as well. 
that's a bad that's a bad movie there's aliens in it it's a terrible movie it is it is absolutely and Roger Moore was in that movie you said so yeah and I I can't remember but he he just totally hammed it up and um, he didn't take any part of it seriously at all so when he was in it you could see what he was doing he was there for a paycheck and it was just funny you know Mm. and they enjoyed it yeah they enjoyed making it and I think that's probably what matters it's I always wanted to see um, Jerry Halliwell kiss an alien. That's always been on my, my bucket list. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that film ticked it. Did a little kiss. An alien. <laughs> UFO came down for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But again, they had, you know, they had good actors in that film. They had um, uh, With Nail and I guy, what's his mm. name? He was in it. He was the manager, I think. Because mm. Roger Moore was the guy who run the record company, I think. And he just said these weird phrases. Why am I talking about Spyfield the movie again? Stop it. Stop <laughs> doing this to me. <laughs> okay, so, bad movies. We're done. No, we're not. We, 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 you sure? You want to open this, this wound again? I think you desperately need to get the room off your chest. Okay, so let's talk about the room. First of all, let's... Um, let, I, don't, I don't know if there is a trailer for this, but um, if there is, it's going to happen right now. A perfect world. These are for you. Thanks, honey. They're beautiful. A perfect life. I would do anything for my girl. I love you, Lisa. I love you, Johnny. Surprise! He provides for you. Darling, you can't support yourself. I don't love him anymore. He didn't get his promotion. And he got drunk last night. And he hit me. It's not true. I did not hit her. Well, maybe you should have a girl, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I have one already. I don't know yet. We can't do this anymore. Johnny's my best friend. This will be our secret. Don't worry. You can trust me. Who we are expecting? <laughs> I'm your future husband. You sure about that? Please talk to me, please. You're having an affair with Lisa, aren't you? I need more from life than what Johnny can give me. She's a sociopath. She can't love anyone. There is no baby. I told him that to make it interesting. But you're such a manipulative witch. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting our friendship. I treat you like a princess, and you stab me in the back. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Hey, Danny. Where's my money, Danny? Put the gun down. What the hell is wrong with you? Just shut up. Oh. Oh, hey! Hey, oh. I'm fed up with this world. The Room, a film with the passion of Tennessee Williams, directed by Tommy Wiseau. The best movie of the year. Experience this quirky new black comedy. It's a riot. Okay, so that was a trailer for The Room or not. (laughs) (laughs) On what we found. Um, Right. Explain explain what The Room's about, because I don't want to. Okay, the story about The Room is it's about this guy... Can I get you anything else? No, no, I'm fine. Just, uh, yeah, I have the bill. Right, thanks. Certainly. I'll get it for you. Um, so, yeah, so the film is basically Tommy Wiseau and this girl, and she secretly is having an affair with somebody else. Uh, she's pretending to love him, but he's she's just using him for his, um, for his naval, naval sex. <laughs> his belly button belly fetish. Bu- belly button fetish and uh, his pillow fights. And his wonderful uh, sense of affection. Uh, he's, she's got a mother. Uh, the, the mother is, uh, is, uh, is currently going through diagnosis and prognosis of, of cancer treatment possibility. Um, but nobody cares. Is um, it brought up again ever since she, she mentions it? and then She mentions it? it once and then it's never mentioned again. Because, right. because her relationship problems are more important than her mother living or dying. Um, so it never brought up again. Very strange. Don't understand why. But she basically says, "Stay with Tommy. Tommy loves you. Tommy's got money. Tommy's got a big, big promotion coming up." But she goes, "Oh no, I love Mark." Now Mark is de- is is Tommy's best friend. Yeah. And I think it's mentioned a lot. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and then um, Mark gets this conflict and wants to tell Tommy but doesn't, and then uh, Denny gets b- busted for drugs. And the gangsters get uh, citizen arrest by uh, citizens on patrol. 
I guess. Somebody arrests them, but there, there are no police in sight. Nobody actually takes them. You know, they're taken away by Mark, I guess, and Tommy. Uh, after a big uh, altercation on the rooftop and uh, they have a big discussion with Denny about drugs and the, the moral implications of drugs because he really does look like a user and a dealer <laughs> totally got that characterization perfect um, and then um, and then they have a party and um, it comes out that uh, she loves Mark and uh, for some reason Tommy ends up dead on the floor with blood coming out of him and uh, oh, oh, they they play throw the ball around. They they, they the, the football is there a lot, and yeah. uh, it's a big deal to have that football in the film apparently. But uh, they like to play ball, and uh, really, that's the plot. Um, but what happens in the in, in in the room is a lot more deeper than that. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's the most amazing dialogue that you've ever heard. You, and uh, I'm going to stop talking now because Andy really needs to say something. That was, that was a real sound. Yeah. Um, I hated the room. I hated it. The Birdemic, I really didn't like it. It was a nothing movie. Yeah, this but one. this... It, 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 I found it creepy and... Oh, so what's the main actor's name again? Tommy Whistle. Tommy Whistle. I found him creepy. And He's an oddball. And icky and... I just... I guess there's something to be said that he's, I, th I do believe he's tried to he tried to make a, a decent film. Didn't. Technically, technically, it could have been a lot worse. The sound was consistent. They had boom mics. Um, they had people who knew how to hold boom mics. They did no, not a single boom in shot, by the way, I noticed. Which is saying something. Right. It has its merits in its production technicality of... I mean, we, I, I would be envious if we were able to make... Uh, not Strip away all the actors and just focus on cameras and, and setups and, and, and editing... Uh, we'd oh, be lucky if we actually yeah, had so, that technical so he had some money behind him or he had some money himself to make this yeah there's something there so, so isn't that worse to oh. have the money to do it and still come out with that than having very little money and not making a very good film to have the money the backing and it ends up like just that it's fucking awful yeah no I, do you know what I, I just kind of feel as though that the film never. Uh, the guy, Tommy was okay. Let me just let me just go out on a limb to say that Tommy Wiseau thought that he was making the best movie ever made. He thought in his own heart and mind uh, that he was going. He was making a decent film. Okay, he didn't. Everybody f realized that his technical abilities were fine, but his his dialogue. Hit the acting, uh, the, basically the content of the film mm. was just absolutely atrocious. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I will agree with you on that. Absolutely atrocious. At least, shall I say that Tommy Wiseau tried? Can we say that he tried to make a movie? Okay, we'll say he tried to make a movie. I, um, yeah, I just found I find him as a screen presence creepy. He is, yeah. And he's not. He's not your lead. No, no, it might have been better to have stayed out of the film altogether. Not that any of the other actors are any good either. No, no. He, maybe he, his one talent is to pick terrible actors. And, and, to, and to write terrible, terrible scripts. Yeah. To write a terrible story. Um, but the dialogue is funny. you got to admit, the, the every single scene starts with, Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, oh hi, Denny. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. The lines, his delivery, his... His presence on the screen is in itself. He's a self-made parody of himself. Yeah. He, he's not, but it has reached cult status. Yes. Um, just like all those wonderful films that we adore, such as um, Mad Max and other <laughs> <laughs> cult classics. <laughs> Do you know what, my brain? Do you know what, it's, it's weird. Your brain switches off, and you think you've got this huge list of, of, of yeah, intelligent the... things that you're going to say, and all you have is Mad Max, 
Big Trouble in Little China, I'd say it's a yes. cult film. Yeah, cult yeah. films. Yeah. Films that basically nobody nobody wanted to put in money. Spice World, yes, no. <laughs> Stop making me talk about it! I can't help it! We're talking about bad films, damn it. <laughs> Do you understand it? We're talking about bad films. Um, but yeah, it has reached cult stages because on a worldwide level, people want to see this. Now, it's not because they want to go and watch the film and actually take something in themselves. They want to watch it with, a, with an audience. It's an interactive film. Yeah, so we're going back to the these films shouldn't be watched. On alone. their own. You can't watch them quietly. I, is it, there needs to be a certification for these films. There needs to be a new So one. you've got U, PG, 12A, 12, 15, AP. 18, and... AP, audience participation. Audience participation. It should not... Dangerous to watch alone. Yeah, do not watch on your own. Yeah. Because you want... In some extreme cases may cause coma. It's like it's like somebody buying you a Hungry Hungry Hippos and you're expected to sit there just playing it on your own. You know, it's, it's for four players. That was my childhood. <laughs> It's but it's, bringing it all back. It's for two or four, two or more players. Okay. Yeah. This film is for uh, twenty or more. If if, if basically when, when, <laughs> when, when I used to play it on my own, I always lost. <laughs> but you know what I mean. This is good. All this participation, but they have a number next to it. Yeah. You've got to have a certain amount of people. If it doesn't reach that amount of people, you don't go into the cinema to watch it. Yeah. And it gets taken down, and it get, gets sent back to the distributor and say no. The audience participation uh, certificate could not be uh, fulfilled. Yeah. Go make something else. And the picture next to the certification will be the picture of someone's <laughs> face with his eyes gouged out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that, that's it. You cannot mean if you have a, a, a cinema full of fifty people who have seen the room, know what the room's about. They're all they're all plied with alcohol. They're all throwing footballs around, which is what they did. Yeah. They do this. Tommy Wiseau goes around the world. He's jet setting around the world, um, introducing his film to hungry audiences who want to watch this film with everybody else enjoying it. And this is why it's different from Birdemic, and why it, it does have an element of success behind it, even though. It is the most revolting performance you will ever see. It has to be watched with an audience. This right. is why we have not had that experience. Well, you made me watch it by myself. Without uh, it was it, now we've we've come to the uh, conclusion that that was a dangerous thing to do. I could yeah. have died. You could have died. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm we, lucky to be here. We, we need to we need to contact the BBFC and we need to let them know about this. Yeah. Because it is a dangerous phenomenon that's going around now. Yeah. Because all these movies are available online. It's not as if the distribution is limited to a thousand copies and those thousand copies are distributed worldwide and they get lost in the recesses of people. Ima own. Imagine you're a 12, 13 year but old. DVD <laughs> and you just, you, you're, you're online and you say, The Room, I'll watch that. That's going to ruin the rest of his life. Yeah, I mean, The Room, it's a subversive title. It has no meaning. But he's, that poor kid is now going to, the first sexual experience he has, he's going to try and stick it in a belly button. <laughs> Gonna have problems. I'm with. gonna qualify that because <laughs> please, please qualify that. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a sex scene in it where he is nowhere near her vagina. Tommy Wiseau needs to have a biological uh, uh, biology biology lesson, yeah. Or actually, at least watch something. That, yeah, watch Showgirls maybe. If he watches, no, 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 that's, well, that's definitely the wrong way to do it. <laughs> You'll be thinking he has to be fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> Why once she gyrates on top of him? Yeah, she has to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and actually, I was but at least only... she gets paid for it. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to pay his wife. No, don't you have to, have to pay for me? It's free. It's free. <laughs> but on the um, IMDb okay, okay, page, okay. it does say because there's there's two sex scenes in it, and she she was that weirded out by the sex scene that she, the actress wouldn't do it again so they had to use just different shots of the first sex scene okay to make up the second sex scene interesting yeah is that was that hang on that was for showgirls no no that was for the room i can imagine yeah because they both look the same they do yeah they yeah you can tell yeah and lisa the actress i kind of thought that um that, that, you know the, the whole the whole foreplay thing about the pillow fight there's a yeah. pillow fight there's Denny who would put anybody off sex for a lifetime anyway. Well, I'm, I've, I've, I've been a long time, so I'll be doing it again after watching that film. 
<laughs> oh man. Okay, so Charlie Sheen, please watch this movie. You will be cured, <laughs> will be cured of any any possible in, infraction in the future, and at least he won't be having any hookers crying in his wardrobe for a while. Yeah, like. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's it, but it, it has. I'm actually starting to see a purpose for this film. It has worked. Yeah, to be like for people in prison should yeah. be made to watch it. Just to, sex offenders. Yeah, watch this watch film. You will never want to do anything ever again. <laughs> this is out there in the world. You won't want to leave this place. You stay in there. You know, forget parole. Once you once you enter the room, you never leave. Is that is that why? That's I'm another talking? one of my point five percent moments. That's that's a good moment because but the title itself, the room, it is it's all about going in there and, and it's, it's it's a place. The the film, the room, is a place. It's yeah. Like, don't go there. <laughs> okay. But he has actually appeared on daytime, uh, daytime American TV. Has he? And they're promoting, promoting it. And he did admit that uh, that it was. It, well, it's, I say he admitted. Uh, his story is that he actually intended for it to be funny and it, but enjoyed by audiences. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I don't believe that for a second. No, I know, and 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 that's it. The room is out there for uh, forever. It's going to be there after we're gone. Birdemic is going to be out there after we're gone. That's a cheery thought. <laughs> well, Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're not going to end there. Another one there. But yeah, it is the room. It, 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 I I don't think it is as bad as Birdemic because Birdemic uh, didn't even bother to to have the technical ability. It didn't even bother bother to distribute itself correctly, and it doesn't come across as as anything but a waste of space. Right, I get that, but I would say that the people who made Birdemic were try they didn't succeed, but they were trying to make something that looked awful and is awful in an ironic sense. They didn't succeed doing it, but that's what they were trying to do. But with the room, I hate it because I just I hate it I hate it I just I don't like those other films I think the crap I'd never watch it again but I hate The Room I, I don't wanna that's it there you go it's out there maybe I need to watch it with ten drunk Germans <laughs> <laughs> I would like this movie to be seen uh, what, has Mark Kermode watched it? I have no idea we need to find out yeah uh, good I don't think it, it was 2000 wasn't it it was made 14 years ago but I think we struck on some important points that these yeah. films need to be watched with other people and then we come up with our whole new BBFC uh, we have rating. do not watch alone dangerous AP, AP and, a, and a, a minimum number of the amount of people that should be in a room with you at any time ok so with Birdemic AP how many at least 3 4 yeah Birdemic no yeah I, I don't think you want to have too many because it could get violent. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to have a cap on that. So three, two or three two people. Or three. Recommend two or three people. Yeah. Well. The room, I would say 20. 20 to 30. 20 to 30 people. Yeah. So, the, you know, because you can all sort of... And bring your own props. Br yeah, bring your and own wigs. props. And wigs. They all wear wigs as well. They wear the Tommy Wiseau wig and uh, oh, they, oh, they get dressed up as their favourite character <laughs> they, I, I can, I can, they I even have a little you know the little characters there's little um, you know you get the Ozzy Osbourne uh, little Mimi character oh yeah yeah and you press a button it has all those favourite sayings they've got a Tommy Wiseau one Jesus and he sits there on daytime television playing with it and, and pressing it look I, I say things you know if, oh, if, if I go to if I it's doubtful it will happen Yes, but if I ever go to one of these audience participation, participation shows of the a room, AP20. I am going dressed as the door that they enter the room in, because that was the best part of it. It, it did door squeak. opened. It, was, it, it did. Was, it did exactly what it should do. It opened and closed. It did. Yeah, yeah. So it, that's it the best point. character in the in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, but there you go. I think I think we've done this one to death, and I'm I'm really I think we've come up with some different things. Okay, we haven't done that. We didn't do our tests for Guardian of the Galaxy. For one thing, the Bechdel test. Was there, the the Bechdel test was definitely in here because the mother and the daughter in the room. About yeah, the room in Birdemic. Uh, I don't think anybody talked about anything really. No, they did. Yeah, there was conversations about the guy. Yeah, yeah, there was. Mm -hmm. Sure of it. 
Yeah. Uh, Guardians, no. There isn't any. There isn't any. No. Well done, James. Go on. No girls talk about a guy. In Guardians of the Galaxy. The sisters, don't they talk about him? The and sisters? their fight at the end? Yeah, but it's not a romantic. They don't talk about... No, they don't. They don't. The, there, there is no... Well, it passed. It passed, yeah. Great. Uh, so... Can, there, can, can we mention Guardians of the Galaxy in every one of these we do? <laughs> Even if it's just like... Guardians of the Galaxy you, exists. You, you, yeah, you just elevated the podcast out of it being a, a dirty, dirty film about a dirty, dirty podcast about rubbish films, and now it's like the best podcast ever <laughs> because yeah. you mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. Um, but yeah, um, so Bechdel text, be- text test. <laughs> the like, Bechdel text. <laughs> the uh, did you send a text uh, about? Did two girls send a text about a guy? You passed. <laughs> so Guardians of the Galaxy passed. Uh, Bird Demic didn't. I'm sure it didn't. And um, the room definitely no, didn't. Definitely didn't. Okay, the E of the three. There's no E of the three in either Bird Demic or. So there's no the scares. Yeah, no shock scares. And there's not in Guardians. There's nothing scary at all, really. Yeah. No, no, there was no shock test in that either, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no there wasn't. What was our other. Um, didn't we have another one? <laughs> right, I'm going. I'm off. I'm done. Roasted portions. Go watch. Go listen to our podcast. <laughs> He's leaving. He's leaving. Oh dear. He's gone. He's gone. He's had enough. He's, yeah. So so go to roastedportions.com website if you want to catch this and other podcasts alike. Um, you can also go to the uh, YouTube channel. Um, roasted portions again. Just type in roasted and portions and you'll find us. Ignore the pictures of sautéed potatoes, bacon bits, and other assortment of food items that, that come in small packages. We are the only one. SoundCloud, frame by frame pod. Holy cow, yes. SoundCloud, frame by frame pod. I thought you were gone. I'm going. I'm in another room. <laughs> He's in another room. Hi, babe. I have something for you. Oh, hey, guys. Hi, baby. Anything for my princess. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap. Can I go upstairs, too? <laughs> I just like to watch you guys. Two is great, but three is a crowd. <laughs> hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Keep, go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Can I kiss you? You are such a little brat. Just kidding. I love you and Johnny. Do you want me to order a pizza? Whatever. I don't care. I already ordered a pizza. <laughs> you think about everything. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm wasted. I love you, darling. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. I owe him some money. What kind of money? I owe him some money. What kind of money? Everything is okay. He's gone. Everything is not okay. Denny, that is a dangerous man. Just calm down. He's going to jail. Denny, what kind of money? Just tell me. I told you, expect me to forget that. You're not my fucking mother. Your friends, we're going to help you. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I used to know a girl. She had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad, she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> What a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. You just can't figure women out. Sometimes they're just too smart. Sometimes they're flat out stupid. Other times they're just evil. It seems to me like you're an expert, Mark. Hey, Johnny. Oh, hi, Danny. What's wrong with Mark? He's cranky today. <laughs> you're very welcome, Danny. And keep in mind, if you have any problems, talk to me and I will help you. Awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Let's go eat, huh? Come. You're lying. I nearly hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Chicken, Peter, you're just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Please. Come on. Cheep, 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 Liquid storage bags. You will never get caught short again thanks to liquid storage bags. Here you get eight, that's right, eight bags in which you can store your very own liquid items. Bags on sold separately, liquid not included. 
the attractive cardboard box is easy to open. With each wonderfully transparent, durable, and easily accessible, ready, ready to, to go. go! That's right, when you've got to go, liquid storage bags are there for you! Liquid storage bags? That's right, liquid, liquid storage bags! They're sleek, sturdy, and stylish, and what's more, you can write all the information you need right there on the bag, where the space is provided. Warning, do not write on liquid storage bags. Liquid storage bags cannot be found in any store, by phone, or online. So you know that liquid storage bags are the product for you. And, and only you. you! What's it called? Liquid storage bags! Ah, uh, yeah! yeah. Liquid, Liquid storage bags!